So, hi everyone, and uh, welcome back to the Jaguar uh, guitar series. So, having finished all the main components of the guitar and polished up all the paint and lacquered it and um, you know, got everything ready, uh, we can get on with doing the electronics in this um, episode. So, first of all, what we need to do is assemble all the main control plate uh, components. So, that's essentially you've got three control plates in a Jaguar. You have the uh, rhythm circuit selector with its own volume and tone. Um, and then we've got the main switch selector which selects the pickups um, and also has a bypass filter uh, which uh, takes knocks off a load of mids I think off of the uh, off of the tone. So we need to assemble that and then finally we have the main uh, tone and volume when you're using the normal circuit and also has the instrument output um, jack socket for the, for the lead. So um, once we've assembled all that, I did a quick, quick mock-up and you'll see parchment white scratch plate there. Thanks guys for making up my mind for me. And um, we mark out the um, screw holes and the reason I didn't do that on the CNC is because uh, whilst the scratch plate would fit, the um, control plates might be slightly off and I didn't want to do the hole drilling until I'd got that kind of all assembled then we can drill the holes and make sure the screws are exactly in the right place so everything fits as nicely as it's going to. Um, so drilling out those holes quickly which was uh, fairly easy to do uh, all is a nice wood to work with and then we come on to shielding. Now if you've seen the double neck uh, build series then you'll know that I went with uh, shielding paint and that's what I decided to do for this uh, it's easier than obviously the brass uh, plates is also more effective because the brass plates only essentially shield the back of the cavities not the sides so um, using some conductive paint uh, is quite easy so masking up with just standard you know blue 3m um, masking tape and then paint all around the cavities. Um, now I did make a, a slight error um, actually in a couple of places and you'll see that in a second. Uh, one bit before I forget because we've got loads of separate cavities on here and they all need to be continuously wired up back to the ground on the uh, instrument lead. Uh, we've obviously got holes drilled in in various places to join the cavities up and then normally that's uh, a wire and there will be some wire as well for that matter um, joining up the shielding plates which would normally be on the bottom of each of these but because I'm using paint um, we need a way of joining those up so as a way of testing, and hopefully that shows up, let me just see, yeah you can see that, good, 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 so we put that in there, check continuity, so if that drops down to zero, we, we've got continuity, look, so we've got continuity, Continuity all the way from the rhythm circuit over to the um, treble cavity. And the way I achieve that is quite simply uh, take a Q tip, as they're called in the US, I think, a cotton wool bud, and dip that in your paint, and basically use that to brush in the conductive paint into the drilled holes you might have to kind of work backwards and forwards quite a bit on and kind of press into the side walls if you like of the hole on that particular drill because it's um, quite long obviously compared to the others but quick tip if you're doing that kind of if you're going to use the same method 
And now it's time to uh, get the masking tape off and here come the errors. Right, as you can see, there I had a couple of uh, bits of overspray, inverted commas. Actually, a bit leaked underneath the tape. Actually, I've got some more here. Luckily, that paint is water based, and what I'm using here is uh, what's called APC all purpose cleaner. It's a car cleaning product. Um, it's meant for upholstery, but it Be honest, which is just as well. Yeah. And seems to be clear coat friendly, so um, yeah, we can get rid of that error on the paintwork there. Okay, with the error out of the way, it's uh, time, whilst we've uh, got a few minutes, just to quickly put the strap locks on. Um, these are my normal Shaler strap locks, as per usual, the safest ones I know of. Quick soldering tutorial. <laughs> okay, uh, best way to do this is to tin both ends and both bits you're going to solder before you try soldering together. I've already done end here. Just do it again. Because it needs a bit more on it. So I put a bit of solder on that end. So it's all covered with a little bit of a blob on there. And then look at my wiring diagram just to double check. And you need to go from this one. So apply this there for a little bit just to get some heat on it the solder won't flow properly. Right, all we need to do here then is essentially melt the two bits of solder together rather than sitting there trying to put solder onto the joint. There we go. One soldered joint. shrink on it to make sure I put a piece on before I solder the other end this one's going to go to the middle contact on here and you also need to kind of bend it so it doesn't foul up on the cavity itself now what I tend to do with heat shrink is I tend to stick it in place to start with, uh, sometimes there's some residual heat in in the joint anyway, and then at the end, um, just run a hot air gun over the whole thing that you've soldered, um, just for a couple of seconds. And a hot air gun is much better at um, doing heat shrink because it's more uniform all around the the actual rubber so it shrinks it more uniformly just generally tidier okay so uh, we can get on with uh, finishing up this particular control plate for the circuit now what I tend to do is solder all the um, interconnects if you like the bits that are uh, staying within the confines of the uh, control plate itself first and then put any external wires on so you can see me putting a fairly short you know interconnects between switch there and the, and the uh, volume and tone pot in this case. Not sure if I'm going to use this or not. A <laughs> uh, bit of a deviation I guess. I'm not quite sure how the original fender instrument goes but essentially the um, bridge needs to be grounded and according to the wiring diagram there's a wire coming out from this point and going into here so what I've done is I've taken that and I'm just going to run it to essentially a star point in the um, in the main pot cavity here 
bit I'm a bit concerned about is the fact that there's a lot of wires bunching up underneath this um, underneath this pickup, which might make it difficult to, you know, adjust it to the right height. Let's see how we go. But actually, so also I've just checked this for continuity as well. We've got good continuity from one of the saddles here all the way to the end of the wire, so that's not a concern. So after that quick break to uh, ground the bridge, we can go back to the uh, control uh, circuit that I was, or the control plate that I was soldering up, and we put the external leads on that uh, essentially are going into other compartments within the instrument. Also put the uh, tone capacitor on as well. Now that um, was a very tight squeeze and in the end actually I uh, put it on the back of the pot to start with but that proved to be uh, too tight a fit essentially so what I did is I took it off there and moved it between the two pots and there was more room there and it therefore the plate um, with the assembly and soldering could fit into the cavity a lot easier and then really it was on to the main switch um, plate so that's the one that has the pickup switches and also the uh, filter bypass circuit on it. Now the, the fender wiring diagram actually had an error um, for the pickup input uh, solder point. It's actually on the wrong pin. Uh, it's in the right place on that switch but the wrong pin so uh, it would never make a circuit if you soldered it up the way they showed it. So I had to um, make an adjustment there so that it, um, you know, it actually functioned as it was supposed to. And then we got on to the uh, main output, you know, section control plate, so the main volume and tone, and also the output jack. And that's pretty much similar to standard um, strap wiring, apart from one resistor. Okay, hopefully you can see that one. So there's the ground for the, the bridge. Right, um, where are we? So we've got most of the wiring kind of laid out and in. We've done all the, if you like, the backs of each of the control plates, control plates. And so we've, we've done all the wiring there. We've got most of it laid out as well now. Uh, what we've got to do now is essentially start soldering things in an order that allows us to um, get the shortest cable runs possible but also that doesn't prevent us from getting another wire in from somewhere else. This is one of those jobs where I suspect there was probably a like a crib sheet within Fender um, where they did everything in in a certain order and uh, it probably if you've got that crib sheet it makes things very easy to do and I'm kind of trying to feel my way if you like to that uh, by working out what I need to solder at which point um, so that I don't stop myself doing something else and also see that yeah also we probably don't want miles of loose cable like this that we're going to have to try and shove into these pockets so uh, for example you know I've got to pull these this yellow white and blue wire into the rest of the instrument that way uh, which will then allow me to solder the pickup wire to its terminal on this switch um, and, and leave a minimum amount of wiring there. So I'm thinking at the moment I need to start at the furthest point away and work my way towards the instrument jack. That would seem to be the logical way of doing this. So back to it and uh, we're on the home stretch here now where I can uh, start soldering up the kind of external leads in each of the uh, cavities and start screwing the uh, actual control plate assemblies down. Um, also put the tremolo 
uh, plate on with its assembly as well while we're at it as uh, no dependencies there we have to worry about and also screw the pickups down and solder the ground wires for that to the star point that I showed earlier in, in the video um, and um, really from that point once you've kind of got the order sorted out it was um, it was fairly easy going and obviously the second instrument I did uh, building two of these at the same time was um, even quicker than that you'll notice that I'm putting the drawing point star points onto um, each of the uh, assembly you know control plate assemblies um, funnily enough actually the where you sometimes get a little lip of paint you don't actually need that it grounds anyway uh, but just to be on the safe side I did that because of course you know one of the uh, um, common problems is essentially you know not having proper grounding in your instrument then it was over to the scratch plate and the same as with the double neck strap uh, I used the conductive copper plate which has conductive adhesive which is brilliant um, to essentially shield the whole of the plate. Now I know the fender diagram doesn't actually cover the whole of the underside of the plate but I figured it wouldn't hurt to do so. And then really it's just a case of final screwing down and we are done for the electrics. Now obviously I did test this, you know, go over to the amp and you can um, tap a screwdriver on the pickups to make sure everything works uh, correctly and it did first time which I was very surprised about. <laughs> so there's uh, the electronics done and really we're into the final stretch but that'll come in the next video so thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one